Hi, everyone, and welcome for, um, to our webinar today. Um, my name is Vera Mutrai. I am Head of Trials and Chief Scientist here at DataVent. Uh, and today we'll be talking about the value of a patient-centric and real-time approach to real-world data in clinical trials. I'm joined today by R.D. Aryampur, CEO of Seekster. Uh, and uh, for those of you who have not been to our webinars beforehand, this is one of a series of webinars where DataVent and our partners talk about the value of real-world data and real-world evidence to improve patient outcomes. Um, so to uh, get started without further ado, I wanted to share a bit about the agenda for today's conversation. Um, but even before that, I want to point out that there is a Q&A section, uh, Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your Zoom uh, uh, windows, where you can ask any questions to our, throughout this conversation. We want to make sure that as Ardi and I are uh, discussing, uh, that we include you as a group as part of uh, this uh, overall conversation. So in terms of goals of what we want to talk about today, uh, there's really two main ones. First is to set the stage on the challenge that we're trying to solve. Uh, the challenges of solid healthcare data uh, and how data collection uh, is important for improving patient outcomes and how patient-centric data co co collection will be important. Secondly, we'll spend some time learning about Seekster and sharing an overview of the capabilities uh, in clinical development and the life sciences there. And then throughout the process, we'll uh, be uh, answering some of your questions. So I'll get us started with uh, some of the backdrop of uh, the problem that we're uh, trying to solve here. So uh, for those of you who do not know data events, our mission is to connect the world's healthcare data to improve patient outcomes. Uh, and we do so by providing technology to data users and data receivers uh, to connect data uh, in a uh, compliant way and in a privacy preserving way. Um, the contention for data events and our business is that um, currently the biggest problem in healthcare is uh, data fragmentation. Uh, and not necessarily that data is not there. Data is growing uh, by the day, uh, but it's uh, being stored in silos and not being shared. And the, the way I think about it is of myself as a patient, um, I have had throughout my lifetime more than five different physicians that I've seen, uh, several different health insurance uh, companies that I've worked with. Uh, if I was a patient in a clinical trial, there would be information about me in that clinical trial that was not connected to any of those other sources. Beyond that, if a physician gives me a prescription today, uh, I can go and fill it in one pharmacy. If tomorrow I need a specialty drug, I would go and fill it out in another pharmacy. Next week, I'm actually moving from California to Pennsylvania, where I will get a new set of healthcare providers uh, and data that will be siloed in a different EHR system. And we believe overall that you know, these data being fragmented uh, does not help the patient and does not help um, the providers, the life science companies and analytics companies that serve those patients um, do so in a way that is efficient and holistic and patient centric. And as we're thinking about how to safely exchange healthcare da data and uh, build better insights for these patients, uh, the biggest stakeholder that obviously we all have to think about is the patient themselves. And through HIPAA in the United States, the patient has uh, rights to access of their data. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, there's an ecosystem that's trying to make healthcare data access more patient-centric. Uh, and this is, this is where our partnerships uh, seek to uh, come in. Uh, and I wanted to pass it on to Artie uh, to hear a little bit more about Seekster's mission and uh, how you guys think about uh, the fragmented healthcare data problem and patient centricity. So welcome, Artie. Great, thanks so much, uh, Vera and DataVant for you know your partnership and friendship, as well as you know giving us some time to do some great things for patients together. Um, uh, you know, at Seekster, our mission is really simple: we put the person at the center of their healthcare to disrupt all of the episodic EMR data, bring together their baseline genetic data, genomic data, as well as um, any wearable. Um, medical device, IOIT, um, not limited to, you know, even their insurance data, claims data, social determinants of health data, uh, pharmacy data, lots of different data. Now, healthcare's fundamental problem, as we all know, has been this data that's been siloed. And this problem is not getting any better. But um, I think more attention has been brought to this, you know, big interoperability problem 
of various different versions of Cerner's and Epics and your, you know, your Quest Labs don't talk to your LabCorp labs if you have a 23andMe in, uh, me test and your Ancestry DNA test, even though they're run on the same Illumina on the Express chip, it still doesn't talk to one another. And so this siloed health problem was what Seekster set out to solve back in 2016 when we founded the company. And we couldn't be more proud by um, you know, really thinking a, a, from a different lens of not going you know, provider to provider, but really focusing on the patient to make this real-time, real-world data platform patient-centric with Seekster, because everyone is seeking health data. It doesn't matter if it's a pharma company, a payer, a provider, a parent within you know, a rare disease study, Everyone is seeking health data, and that's why we created Seekster. Wonderful. Um, and um, actually, we, we already have a question from the audience about uh, you know, the way you can follow this information uh, in a, uh, a patient-centric way. And uh, you know, for those familiar with data, then we talked a lot about de-identified data set and how you can follow the patient journey in, uh, in a de-identified form. Uh, but curious to, to hear a little bit more about uh, how Seekster does this with, with the patient consents uh, in mind. Yeah, so you know, when you put the person at the center of their healthcare and you allow them to control and own and access all their data um, with the e-consent process is how they're able to share data in a fully HIPAA compliant, high trust certified, and more importantly, if we're talking about you know, um, clinical trials or decentralized trials in an FDA compliant manner as well, our system is 21 CFR part 11 FDA compliant. And we have um, created a really nice way, and you'll see that in, in various different slides here, where um, we are able to bring together a 360 patient view of holistic data um, on a patient. And that data is shared in that sharing environment in a very secure way. And you, the person, gets to choose what want you, you'd like to share, number one. And more importantly, right now, I think how decentralized trials are happening and, and that area is exploding because of what happened with the pandemic and you know, sites and CROs and pharma companies trying to figure out how do you actually get this real world data? Everyone's looking to create these data lakes. And the best way to think about Seekster's technology is we're the data river that can fill up that data lake. And we can do that in a, in a very optimal fashion because we've um, created this best in class system that takes not only our you know, patented patient mediated method of bringing together data. But you'll see that um, we've also included various different terrestrial methods that are very complementary to, you know, getting comprehensive information, you know, imaging data, not limiting to, you know, just the EHR data, the lab results. And the most important thing here, I think the takeaway is how we can create a longitudinal health record a ubiquitous health record, as we call it, or an individualized health record. And this is what, you know, um, everyone is really looking for. Great. Yeah. So, so if we go back to using me as, as a patient example, let's assume as a patient tomorrow, I want to enroll in a clinical trial for a particular condition. Uh, I am connected to a uh, pharmaceutical company, a sponsor that runs that trial and their CRO. How do I, as a patient, practically engage with, uh, with this technology? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. So number one, think of us as the Intel inside. We created this patient engagement platform that gets white labeled for your enterprise. ABC Pharma Company, XYZ CRO, you know, one, two, three payer, provider, whoever is looking for real world data in real time, continuous updating happening at that you know, moment of intervention. This is where Seekster's technology really shines. And I think the example that you are giving yourself at the beginning there is a really good one, right? You're, you're in the East Coast, you're going back to the West Coast, you have multiple providers everywhere. How do you stitch all those records together? And this is what Seekster has done with our technology. We have you know, over 91% coverage of the digital health records 
but with some new integrations that are complementary, even on the terrestrial um, uh, medical data collection side, we actually have 100% coverage. And this is where we see the industry, you know, really moving towards this combined, you know, powerful real-time, real-world data um, platform that is plug and play. And not only, you know, um, do we harmonize the data, standardize the data, we've harmonized and standardized all the ICD-9 and ICD-10 and SNOMED codes, but more importantly, we visualize that data. And what I like to say is you don't know, you know what that data really looks like until you bring it to life. Seekster brings that data to life for the patient, for the caregiver, for the parents, um, for the guardian, um, uh, for, the, for the member, consumer, whoever that may be. But at the same time, Vera, I think it's really important because we're able to not only connect the dots for the data pieces that are siloed, but also for the researcher as well, the clinical trial investigator, and um, you know, in a de-identified manner. And this is where you know, our partnership obviously with, with DataVance really shines within the tokenization technology that we've included within Seekster as well. Yeah, so, so from the perspective, and thank you for sharing that, from the perspective of a uh, pharma sponsor and uh, a data scientist that uh, will take a look at uh, combined clinical trial data and real world data, uh, I certainly see the benefits. Um, um, you know, in a clinical trial, as I'm sure you know, all this group here of, uh, of our audience uh, uh, spends time is either either working in uh, pharma or spends time engaging with uh, pharma sponsors. Uh, you're collecting a ton of uh, very uh, controlled data, you know, as part of the the actual ongoing trial. But then there's all this information about the patient that uh, resides in the real world, that resides in their encounters with. Um, with their healthcare providers and with insurance companies and so on and so forth. Um, as a patient, uh, I see the benefit of bringing that information to be able to you know, get a better, better answer out of an intervention that uh, is coming to market for me. Um, as a patient, I also see that it would be difficult for me to do it sort of in a manual way. Um, I, there's a bunch of questions here about how uh, the, the patient volunteering for providing that information how do we get from there to um, to actually the information making it to a sponsor or back to the patient? Yeah, right. So you know, this is a a one stop shop system, as I said, where it gets white labeled for that enterprise. The enterprise then launches the the, the platform to their patients in trials, whether those are existing patients within trials or whether it's through um, you know, new recruitment services where they're trying to collect you know, more data longitudinally and also you know, um, give those patients back some sort of technology where they're able to monitor and track their health. For those of you um, that are familiar with mint.com for finances, um, the experience, the user experience that we spent five years building here at Seekster with you know, thousands of patients um, that we're so grateful for. And that's why the system is so great is because patients told us how they want the patient journey to feel like or the look and feel to be. It's very important to note that um, once you bring, you know, all your data together, how you can actually share certain pieces of that data. If you want to only share your lab data, you have the control to do that. If you only want to share your DNA data, you have the control to do that. If you want to share only the doctor's notes or the pathology report for some you know, big PDL1 you know, oncology use case of some sort, then you have the ability to do that. It's all about it being very patient-centric and um, you have those controls. Now, for the enterprise, the enterprise obviously would be giving this tool to those patients. So in turn, they would be consenting, the patients would be cons consenting in that secure data sharing environment to share certain you know, encounters or data points um, so that the researcher on the enterprise can take a look at that data. And this data, you know, um, is, it can come in two ways. One, it can be exported in various different formats. We have Fire fully integrated, but 
you know, fire is only about 5% of the data. I think where Seekster shines is actually the 95% coverage that we have beyond the fire data. I, I think we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty here. It looks like uh, RD has lost the connection. So if you give us just one minute. Uh, while we while we wait for our day to join again, thanks again for all the questions that are uh, being brought up here. Uh, we're, we're reviewing them live and we'll, uh, we'll try to answer them uh, in real time as soon as uh, possible. Um, yeah, so so one question here was around, you know, is the data source in this case from the patient volunteering to submit to six or not from the health providers? That is correct. So um, if you think about healthcare data exchange, at least in the US per HIPAA, there, there's a couple of ways to, uh, to empower data exchange for primary and secondary research. And as a patient, you have the right to access to your data. So you can, um, you can with your consent, uh, allow for sources to retrieve that data through uh, EMRs and other healthcare data sources. Uh, and, and similarly, th those sources uh, are you know, required to, to provide that information to you as a patient. The other question that I see here that uh, perhaps I might be able to answer is, uh, uh, what is the perspective from um, a patient, assuming that they sign up now, will they have this longitudinal view their entire life if they continue using the app? Um, so yeah, so uh, you, you would have the, uh, the right to, to, to see your own data and uh, um, I'll let RD talk about the, uh, the kind of longitudinal, longitudinality of it, but uh, the, there's, there's a huge trend uh, in industry right now to uh, incorporate patients and uh, their needs into primary and secondary research with healthcare data. And one of the big things to be able to uh, ensure that there's, there's trust between the patients and the providers and uh, the life sciences uh, companies that uh, run some of these trials is to uh, provide an avenue for patients to get their data back. Both data that they've brought, brought into uh, the trial, their real world data, but also the results of uh, clinical trials themselves. So uh, perhaps that might be uh, a conversation for another webinar here, but uh, uh, certainly there's, there's a huge movement to getting data back to the patients. Again, thank you for your patience and apologies for the technical difficulties. Uh, as I'm sure you've been uh, participants in uh, many of these webinars, we're all trying our best. Uh, everybody's working from home and uh, sometimes there's uh, connectivity issues. Uh, that's, uh, that are a little beyond our control. So uh, thank you for your patience. We'll be able to hopefully get RD back online to hear more about uh, uh, the implementation of this process and some of the use cases soon. But in the meantime, please uh, keep the questions coming. I see some great ones that, that uh, I would love for RD to be able to answer, including what kind of genetic data does Seekster collect? Is these data from uh, EMRs or consumer genomic information? Uh, which market coverage are we talking about here in this slide, uh, as well as uh, some information around how the patients are being recruited to join Seekster. I, I think one, one piece to mention, as already mentioned earlier, is that uh, Seekster technology is white labeled to, to the uh, uh, end user, which in many cases is pharma. So pharma companies and the, um, the partners that they use to recruit patients are who would put uh, the Seekster technology in front of the patient. All right, so it looks like uh, our uh, issue with the technical difficulty is resolved. We have Artie back. Artie, welcome. Uh, I think you might be on mute. Welcome no, no, we're good, yeah. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom did not like us today. I have no idea what happened, but Zoom would not let me back in, but I'm glad Zoom you know, let me back in. I think the, the, the power of the platform was so strong, it totally shut everything down. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're glad you're back. Um, I, was, I was answering some of the, the questions that came through the Q&A, uh, sure. and there will be some others that, that, will be, uh, that you'll, you'll be better uh, able to answer. Uh, but to reprise again uh, part of the conversation, we were talking about how 
how a patient interacts with CSER, how the pharma sponsor or an analytics company that, that, that is using some of the data for secondary research uh, also interacts. Um, I come from an implementations background personally myself, uh, and I'm always curious to know sort of like what happens on the back end and how is this feasible? How is this possible? How is this done within the regulatory confinements of HIPAA and the FDA, et cetera? So I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and hopefully, um, you know, Zoom doesn't shut down again, so we'll try to speak a little bit faster to get through this. So number one, I think the key thing here was, um, you know, working with pharma and, and understanding what pharma really wanted from a real world data type of platform. Secondly, going back to engagement, how do you actually, you know, engage the study directors, the, you know, um, the investigators, the PIs, and what do they want to see? How do they want to manage research studies or clinical studies? So we actually built a BI portal, which is a business intelligence portal that was FDA compliance, and it got um, integrated within the enter enterprise data backbone. I think there, when you spoke about integration and, and integrating certain things, it is very hard to you know, do all these integrations, but we try to make it as simple as possible so that it doesn't impose any um, you know, um, extra effort on the IT infrastructure within pharma, CRO, or any large you know, healthcare enterprise that's looking to white label this type of service. And so you know, being fully embedded into the enterprise data backbone within Takeda, since we're a Takeda portfolio company as well, um, was, was great experience and more importantly, we are able to stand up a whole instance for them in less than three weeks. And so if someone you know, is, is watching this presentation and you're looking for these sorts of tools right now in, in empowering you know, your real world data studies, um, now we can you know, deploy this in less than a week. And um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an FDA compliance you know, platform. You're able to manage projects, subjects, and all that you know, data, the trial data, plus the real world data for the first time in one place. And I think that's where it's really important. Wonderful, thanks, thanks, Artie. Um, and if we're thinking about it again, from the perspective of the patients, uh, what we're showing here is an example of actually a fairly famous patient if you're in healthcare data and uh, into uh, uh, research. But uh, I think about it a lot from you know, the regular patient myself, my grandmother, how do we get that data together and how do we do that uh, in a way that is not burdensome to us or to our physicians? Uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about the example that we have here from, from 2018. Yeah, uh, I think there's, there's, there's three really important things on the screen that I'd like to get everyone's attention to. Number one, um, let's forget about who this person is for a second. Let's think about the timestamp that this happened. If you look at the timestamp, this was a tweet by a patient, by you know, a, a medical doctor, by a, the number one cited digital health you know, futurist, the number one skeptic within digital health that thought that you know, we couldn't do what we said we were gonna do on August 21st, 2018. And our phones exploded with the notifications on Twitter when we got you know, millions of people looking at this because of all the retweets and, and likes from Dr. Eric Topol. But the most important part about this is that we did not know that we can actually get data from 20, 30 years ago. And as you can see in his explanation as a patient, as a physician, he's explaining his own experience of the first time he was able to bring medical data from 1985 to present, four different health systems on four different EMRs, plus a bunch of other data from his DNA data, his Fitbit data, his you know, nutrition data from MyFitnessPal. And this is because we spent you know, years building the integrations and being able to standardize and harmonize and stitch those records together. And then, you know, there's obviously this a snapshot of our old UI, which was, this was version 1.6 Seekster. We just launched version actually 7.2 the other week. And um, the product has definitely came, you know, uh, a long way since uh, August 21st, 2018. 
Wonderful. Um, great. So, so that, then one thing that I want to spend some time uh, discussing here, and that might actually end up answering a lot of the, the questions that we're seeing uh, coming in, is around use cases. So, so Artie, if you could share with us any uh, practical use cases of how this technology has been used with uh, pharma sponsors and with other users. Not necessarily to mention the sponsors by name, but I, I think the group would like to know uh, and like to get some ideas of how this technology could be used uh, in, in real life. Yeah, I think, look, um, as everyone's looking at the screen here, this shows a, a great wrap up for you know our conversation today, Vera, number one, number two, the workflow and some of those other questions that probably people we're asking that we didn't get to, or some that we answered as we were going through the slides. Number one, you know, um, it, it's all about putting the patient at the center. We covered that today. Number two, we, by doing that, we're able to break down data silos and give something to the patient, as well as give something to the research, researcher. We're able to bring together this patient-centric 360 holistic view of health that was never possible because of how we uh, built this uh, first in class, you know, system now with Seekster that brings together multiple different ways of onboarding and capturing and managing, you know, all that data. Now, how it hits on various different use cases is in so many different areas. Within oncology, the first time the visits, you know, is so important. It can take sometimes weeks to collect data. Our system can do that instantaneously. At the same time, it's complementary to bring other terrestrial medical record systems within our you know, platform so that you really do get 100% coverage um, uh, for that data. Secondly, within real world evidence, and more importantly, um, folks that are interested in health, economics, outcomes, and research, this is where we're able to connect clinical trial administrators with real-time, real-world data, whether that's the EHR data, the DNA genomic data, the wearable data, the, the pharmacy data, the social determinants of health data, it doesn't matter you know, to us what type of data. It matters what the HEOR researcher is looking for. We're able to connect all that through the patient. That's the key. It all happens with the e consent. We're able to verify identity and ID proofing. And then you're able to join you know, various different studies. And then that engagement happens on two levels. That engagement happens with Dr. Eric Telpel or Vera looking at their data themselves, right? At the same time, there's that engagement piece of the researcher having a communication channel now directly with that de-identified patient. Wonderful. So uh, the, the hero use case that uh, you just mentioned, Ardi, is uh, kind of interesting. Um, if, I, if I remove my patient hat right now and think of it from the perspective of a uh, uh, clinical operations and real world evidence uh, a member of a uh, trial team and a sponsor, uh, the clinical trial patients are the very first patients who take advantage of an intervention. Therefore, by definition, they're the patients who have been on that intervention the longest. Being able to follow those patients after the trial is done to see how they're remaining on that particular intervention, assuming there was an approval, and how well they're doing compared to, to other folks who might not be on that intervention, and how their wellness is uh, translating to um, clinical care costs. That, that, to me, feels very, very powerful and, and a way to bring insights uh, into the real world as quickly as possible with literally the very first patients who volunteered their time, volunteered uh, their family's time and their physician's time to be able to be uh, in these clinical trials. So I, I think that's great. I think that's very powerful. Yeah, and, and I think you hit on something even much more powerful. It's the fact that you know um, you, when, when you are a patient and you're in any type of trial, the old fashion ways, okay, you're in a trial, it's great. But what do you really get as a patient? You know, for everyone that's on this call, who's running a company that wants to help patients, who's coming out with a new drug that wants to help patients, who has a technology company that wants to help patients, at the end of the day, um, whether we want the industry to go this direction or not, we're all patients too. You know, everyone that's getting a vaccine in some way every day is a patient, right? 
whether you're sick or not, or you got COVID or not, we are all patients in one way and at some point in our lifetime. And if we're able to get something back as patients, at the same time contribute via our consent, that real world data to help you know, advance medical science and research, that's where you know, I think the industry has to go. And that's where there's a win-win. And it all starts with the patient and it ends with the patient. And you need a you know, um, first-in-class platform that has conveyed all these technologies into one in order to deliver on that. And um, we couldn't be more excited about all the opportunities and all the patients that we can you know, help impact the lives on. Wonderful, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, again, I'm very excited whenever I see uh, ways to connect healthcare data. Obviously, as, as, as somebody in the industry, I tend to uh, geek out a little bit on that. So um, it's, it's great to be able to see this 360 view uh, in practice in, in some of the use cases. Um, I would say let's uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about some of the uh, practical questions that, that folks have asked here. Uh, I see some of these as things that maybe we can, we can answer live now and then maybe some other uh, things that uh, Seekster um, or, or DataVent can answer one-on-one -on -one because they're, they're very uh, on the nitty-gritty detail. But at the high level, uh, there's actually a couple of questions around uh, genetic and genomic data. So the first one from Chris here is what kind of genetic data does Seekster collect? Clinical or consumer genomic information or both? Yeah, great question. So um, I spent 15 years actually building clinical diagnostic labs and getting my feet wet, I guess, within consumer genomics. And uh, for those of you that love uh, sequencing, that, that's where Seekster actually started. So I was one of the first people back in 2009 to get my whole genome sequenced. And I actually named the company Seekster, not just because of seeking health data, but because of our sequencing experience, because DNA data doesn't tell the full story. So if you have a you know, CFTR test or a BRCA, you know, a breast cancer or ovarian test from you know, a clinical diagnostic lab, you need to pair that information or the genetic counseling you know, divisions have to pair that information with some sort of metadata and electronic health record data. We were never able to do that. And when we were, it was really hard to. And so this is where a system like this really helps, I think, number one. Secondly, um, we have access to you know, all sorts of clinical diagnostic you know, tests, whether that be Sanger sequencing tests, next-gen sequencing tests, and so forth. And that covers genotyping, full exomes, and as well as genome sequencing. On the consumer front, most consumer genomics is done by just genotyping, and we have access to 44 million DNA um, uh, sequencing files for the consumer side as well. And so we have um, you know, both the clinical and the consumer end uh, covered. It's just the file type that is actually different and what type of data is reported on the you know, variants and various different you know, sequencing methods that are done. And I should actually note, not only do we get, you know, the paper records there, but we also can run OCR and NLP on top of those PDFs, whether that's the medical data from our complementary terrestrial methods that we have integrated here to get the 100% coverage, or if it's coming directly from, let's say, you know, LabCorp or Invite or Color Genomics, um, uh, whatever that clinical diagnostic lab may be that the patient has had a clinical diagnostic test or a consumer test like Eric Topol from 23andMe. Wonderful. And then I think this group uh, definitely appreciates how powerful genetic and genomic data is both for biomarker certification, but also for uh, perhaps getting new insights on who's a super responder, who's a non-responder to a drug, and certainly in oncology, which is where my background is, that tends to be the kind of data that uh, uh, everybody's looking forward to and everybody's uh, is, uh, seeking. Um, speaking of data, the, the other question that we have here is uh, around um, uh, EMR and uh, claims and other patient data. So the question is, does Seekster con connect their patient data with claims data providers for use cases in pharma? So do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, minute? actually, one of the largest use cases that we're working on within um, healthcare in general and and the payer community is, is claims plus EMR data. And uh, for those of you that know Haven Healthcare, the reason why Haven Healthcare didn't actually make it with 
Amazon's you know, backing is because they weren't thinking about the patients. And so again, I go back to, you know, when you involve the patient, magic really happens. And when you have an engaging platform that can, you know, allow via the consent, the patient share their claims data and various different, you know, insurance data. Um, this is where that can be combined with, you know, all of the wearable data, DNA data, episodic EMR data, and so forth. And so we, we do have um, uh, the claims integrated within there. Now, a, a lot of the use cases around claims plus EMR data relate to health plans. It relates to, you know, ver various different folks within the payer community trying to run various different analytics on top of, let's say, you know, a million patients. And this is something that we didn't cover um, uh, that I think we missed is, you know, our system is very scalable. It could be for one patient like Vera or Dr. Eric Topol, as you saw, or it could be for 25 million lives from a large payer within the United States that wants to, you know, give something back to their, you know, members for member care or whatever their programs are. Great. Um, the, the other question around data that I see here is uh, for the enterprise view, are you able to augment patient data uh, with demographic data, we're talking income, location, zip code, education, and, and to what extent uh, you're able to or you do? Yeah, so we're not limited by any data source, and that's what's key. So if you take a step back now, knowing, you know, kind of um, the story of Seekster, how it works, you know, the use cases, the data uh, that we're bringing in, um, at the end of the day, um, we're not limited to any type of data source. If there's a data source that we have not connected to, we've created the foundational interoperability technology so that the patient can actually request that data and we could either go fetch that data via certain methods or it can be via fire or it could be via you know, our patented patient-mediated method as well. There's not one way to actually get you know data in and this is where we have taken multiple different um you know um techniques and what i call uh, the sdk of sdks or seekster development kits of you know sandboxes and you know included as much as we can from various different you know healthcare verticals whether that's the emr data the genomic data for precision medicine, the wearable data for certain studies, the RX, you know, social determinants of health data, and all that metadata is included within that. Great, no, that's fantastic. There were a couple of questions of how Seekster does it. Do, do you work with a, a backend integrator? Do you go directly to the clinical trial sites, et cetera, et cetera? And what I'm hearing is that there's there's multiple options that ultimately get to uh, uh, connected data, right? Yeah, and I think the key thing is, you know, um, I, I don't want people to think, so we are not a data lake, but we can create any data lake and we can fill the missing links on any data lake, number one. Number two, we've created this beautiful direct-to-consumer, you know, experience that gets white labeled for that enterprise. If we're talking about, and I'll just mention, you know, um, you know, XYZ Pharma Company or ABC CRO Company that is really looking for real-time, real-world data. As I said earlier, we are that data river that can fill up a data ocean, not just a data lake. And we do that with the consent of the patients. And we do that with you actually getting that 360 patient view on the enterprise side. Great. Um, you just mentioned consent, and I'm, I'm seeing a series of questions here around <laughs> consent and patient consent. And I'm going to try to, I, I appreciate that there's a ton of them, so I'm going to try to uh, summarize them into one. And, and the question really is around um, uh, coverage, uh, coverage of consent. So uh, do you have information about you know, how many patients use Seekster right now? How many of them consent and to what kind of data exchange? And also, if, if you have any comments around uh, geographic spread, so is Seekster available only in certain regions, or is it available wherever, wherever a pharma sponsor or the data is? Yeah, great question. So um, obviously, the US is what we are focused on first. Let's talk about the coverage. But we've cultivated an international network right now 
um, out in the UK, in Europe, and also PAC Asia. And there's some interest in, in Latin America, obviously, but we haven't you know, done anything there. Um, I think the key thing is because we have uh, standardized and harmonized, you know, Epic, Cerner, all scripts, um, McKesson, metadata, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Practice Fusion, uh, all of these various different EMR companies, we spent, you know, the last five years really uh, understanding how their data uh, works so that we can bring in chain of custody of data, not just self-reported data. And, you know, if you look at the, the Middle East as an example, or, 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 or EU, there's various different providers and institutions that are on a Cerner platform, that are on an Epic platform. They're different versions than the ones that are run for NYU or you know, um, MD Anderson or, or Dana-Farber, for example. However, the data and our system can still capture that via the patients. Now, various different countries have different um, rules and regulations. So Germany being a, a very hard example, it's very hard to get data out of Germany. However, there's different ways of working with certain partners to be able to get that coverage. We also you know, um, abide by the data you know, laws within all the regions, and that's very important, whether it's GDPR or GDPR compliance. The same way that in the US, we were the first you know, platform to be CMS ONC compliant which was you know, the new 21st Century Cheers Act for patient access to data. We didn't know that Seekster would kind of become law and that happened you know, last year, just right when the, the lockdowns um, occurred on March 9th of 2020. And then lastly, around the, the data fronts, um, if we're not connected to a region or to a data source, this is the beauty of Seekster, we can still connect with our you know, platform via the consent of the person. So for example, tomorrow a new wearable comes out and I don't know, 100,000 people buy that new wearable. It's called ABC wearable. All they need to do is request the ABC wearable through that white label of you know, um, the Seekster interface. And we're able to bring that data together the same way that we were able to bring Garmin data together, Fitbit data together, and even Apple Watch data, even though one says biking, the other one says cycling. And that's because we built various different tools on the back end to standardize and harmonize all of these you know, terminologies, not just on the medical data end, but even on the fitness end, right? So it goes beyond, I think, you know, our imagination. That's great. So uh, as, as we were talking about geography, actually, like there's a bunch of questions that are US specific. So as, as you think about this, wherever the patients are presented with the white labeled version of the Seekster app, they're, they're, they're able to decide um, if they want to consent to provide data and what kind of data they want to share with their physicians, with, with, uh, with uh, uh, their clinical trial. What's your vision around coverage for the United States? So uh, the integrations are there. Are there certain places where it's more difficult for patients to access this, or are there certain things that are that are happening right now to to get more coverage and uh, more diversity of patients uh, brought into uh, and connected through this solution? Yeah, so I, I think you know our vision is um, keep doing exactly what we're doing, right? Um, put the patient at the center. Make sure that if the patient has any data, we can bring together any data and all data that the patient has. But you know, our expertise really has been you know, connect to any digitized data source. However, that's not the only way of bringing data together. And that's why we integrated with some other you know, various different terrestrial methods to complete that record poll. And you know, um, our, our real are, bread are and butter- Explaining to the group uh, when you mean terrestrial methods. Uh, yeah, so you know, for example, um, you know the, the how you know currently um, data is collected is uh, via one HIPAA release form, as an example. But it may take you know weeks time to get that data, and that's okay. Um, what we do at Seekster and our bread or butter is being able to bring instantaneous data connection 
and bringing some sort of data to that you know, researcher and to that patient. And it's more than enough to begin with. However, we can complete it with that terrestrial method that's included within our, our, our platform. And this is where you know, we have an SDK for mobile on iOS, a white label available for anyone that, that's needing it. We have an SDK available on, on Android. We have an SDK for the web as well. And um, that, that relates to both the patient experience as well as that white label for the enterprise as well. So the key thing is, you know, high quality data, high fidelity data, PDFs as well. You know, terrestrial is the, is the, is the manual way of bringing uh, the data together, but then we can digitize that information and take it one step further and combine it with all of the other Seekster data too. Because there isn't, and everyone on this call knows this, there is not one you know, solution that can do it. And if you think there is, you know, after this call, you know, please give me a call and let me know what that solution is. Because what we've been working on at Seekster for the last five years is trying to build an engagement platform that brings together multiple solutions into one with a very easy user interface that's friendly for anyone to use and so that you can get that Netflix experience with health data. That has not existed. That's where I see the vision of, of, of health data going. It's gotta be as easy as how I order something at Amazon. It's gotta be as easy as how I watch Game of Thrones on Netflix, you know, over and over again in, in, in COVID time. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think that experience has, mi we've missed that, right? As, as just people. And, you know, it's just because healthcare moves so slow and the intersection of healthcare and technology is the only way and innovation is the only way to do it. And now patients are very, very, you know, motivated, I think, after the pandemic. They understand that, you know, those portals are not just for paying another bill. They want something more back. And the best way is if they can track and monitor their health data. Wonderful. Uh, and already, I, I think we covered this uh, early on, but uh, there's still a question around how do patients get access to you, Seekster? Uh, and I believe it's it's through through the wild labeling from whoever, whoever your customers is, but if you want to uh, elaborate yeah. on that. Yeah, so, you know, we've helped, you know, lots of chronically ill uh, uh, patients with access to Seekster. Um, even my own family, uh, you know, my, my father's life was saved um, with colon cancer. We ran a, a, a tumor board in six hours, got him in surgery in six days because of the data that we were able to collect. So this is very personal for us. It's very personal for me. But more importantly, you know, um, uh, our business model is B2B. And it's a white label, like you said, Vera, where pharma companies, healthcare companies, um, you know, CROs, um, any technology companies that are looking to have a digital health solution out of the box and um, at scale, uh, they can white label our service and they can deploy it to one patient or a million patients within, you know, less than two weeks. Um, and there's lots of different customizations. As I said at the beginning, our look and feel is that mint.com you know, look and feel of bringing together your Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and student loans, seeing your net worth. I always ask the question of what about your net health? And so this is where we're able to bring all the EMR data, all the genomic data, all the wearable data, you know, all the other types of data and, and see that, you know, net health information. But our business model is the salesforce.com of healthcare. And that has never existed. And that's what Seekster is all about. But we put the person at the center of healthcare in order to deliver on that because interoperability will be delivered through engagement and through patient engagement. And that's the platform that we've created. That, that is wonderful. And uh, really excited to see uh, a lot more patients engage with this platform through the ways they engage with healthcare data and to see more patients uh, being helped in the same way that uh, thankfully your, your father was. Um, that, that is so great to hear. Um, there, there's a final question here around the operational connectivity between Seekster and DataVent. And frankly, you know, why am I, uh, Vera from DataVent talking to you today? 
So, so Seekster and Datavent have been partners for, for a while now. We, we announced uh, a little um, earlier in the, in the last year. Uh, we, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, Datavent's mission is to connect the world's health data. Seekster provides healthcare data in, uh, uh, in a particular form through patient consented ways. Uh, but certainly privacy preservation on top of that data is also key and also important. Uh, you don't necessarily need to have a patient's information associated with the data to be able to do aggregated analytics. So data events technology helps with de-identify while still making linkable uh, that healthcare data and augment it with other de-identified data in a HIPAA certified privacy preserving way. Uh, and that is the, the partnership and the kind of technology that we uh, bring together with other partners in the data event ecosystem in service of uh, healthcare data users and ultimately the patients. Yeah, and I'd like to add, you know, we, you know, thank you so much um, for, for your partnership. Um, the tokenization and de-identification of data is so important. And having that integrated again within Seekster and delivering that white label for enterprise, you know, um, just adds a, another added value for connecting, as an example, just looking at here, the health um, economics outcomes researcher with the de-identified data on that patient, you know, whether that be my dad or, or, or someone else. So we're just so excited about, you know, really pushing the outcomes research and the, the visualization of data really helps as well for post-market surveillance. Wonderful. Yeah, we're, we're all very excited about that future. Uh, and, and to to wrap it up, uh, I'd like to ask a final question to you already that I ask uh, all of our guests at these types of webinars. As you're thinking about the next five to 10 years and you're thinking about real world data and real world evidence generation, where do you see the innovation be both you know, on the technology and on the operational side? Yeah, you know, um, I think um, the pandemic accelerated, you know, all of our lives within, you know, um, data as well as research, as well as just interest, right? Um, by five years, I would say minimum five years. So whatever was gonna happen five years from now is kind of happening now. Um, if we're looking at decentralized trials as an example, and not just clinical trials, you can see how important it is to be able to have a system that you can put the person at the center so that you can actually bring together data as quickly as possible, as complete as possible, and, 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 and really advance medical research. I think you're gonna see patient centricity explode in the next decade. The first time I saw a banner on patient centricity at JP Morgan Healthcare Conference was actually in San Francisco of 2020. It was the first time I saw pharma actually talking about patient centricity. But now every single webinar is talking about patient centricity. We were trying to get everyone's attention in 2016. No one wanted to listen. In 2017, maybe a couple more people, you know, knocked on our door and wanted to know what it was. And then 2018, finally, you know, I think once there was some press out, people understood, wow, you know, this is really possible. I think there's going to be more tailwinds. However, I do believe data will become more siloed. And, you know, that gives us a reason to exist. That gives us a reason to fight this fight. And, you know, um, we're looking for the right collaborators that want to, you know, um, a push this envelope um, as far as possible, and more importantly, impacting patient lives at scale. And we really appreciate, you know, everyone that's, you know, fighting this fight. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Artie. And I guess to, to summarize, as we're nearing the, the, the top of the hour here, uh, if we could leave the group with, with a couple of thoughts is, again, the, the appreciation that I'm sure the, this group has uh, that healthcare data is fragmented and that that fragmentation harms patients. So being able to connect those silos is important and being able to do so uh, in a patient-centric way uh, is really what's needed uh, at the bottom of it to provide that holistic, dynamic, longitudinal view of the patients. Uh, we're really excited uh, to be part of, uh, of that journey uh, with uh, Seekster uh, and your team, Artie. Uh, and uh, I wanted to also take time to thank the audience today. Um, thank you so much for your questions, for your engagement. This has been a really enjoyable conversation with all of you. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you all uh, at our next conversations. 
between now and then. I hope you all have a great rest of the day and you all remain in good health. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Vera. Thanks, David. Thank you.